I think, well, yes, we are. We're live and I am absolutely so excited and thrilled to have the free-spirited Dawn Bates with me today, author, business strategist, author coach, and most of all, a sailor. So as I said, I'm <laughs> absolutely thrilled to have you with me. I'm Debbie Debonair from the Heart Act and um, Dawn's going to share with us her reborn and rebirth experiences. So Dawn, over to you. Well, I'm just, um, I mean, I don't, I'm just—I'm going live on my Instagram. This is the first time I've ever done it. I don't know if the people there can actually um, hear me. So if you can hear me on Instagram, hello. And if you can hear Debbie, if not, we're over on live on Facebook. So technical challenges. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is a rebirth in itself, isn't it? <laughs> but thank you so much for having me on. Mm. Thank you so much for inviting me to join you. It's a real pleasure to I'm be pleasure here to. with you. So, yeah. Woo! Shiny. Introduce yourself a little bit, Don. I know I've kind of given a little bit of tiny little sentence background, but just introduce yourself and, and then we'll talk more about your mm. rebirth. Well, um, but as you said, um, I'm an author, a business strategist. Um, so I help, um, not only do I write my own books and ghostwrite for others, um, but I also help other authors either become an author or existing authors develop the business side behind being an author. Um, and I work with influencers who want to stop hiding behind their business and actually show up as themselves. Um, I sail around the world doing this, so I'm completely location free. Um, and um, I giggle every day, giggle therapy, it's a must. Um, yeah, and I'm a mother of two boys and two fur babies. Um, not literally, obviously, the <laughs> fur babies. That, that was not a birth that I went through. <laughs> no. <laughs> I really just say <laughs> that would be a bit weird. <laughs> That would be like the Daily Star kind of story in the UK, wouldn't it? <laughs> um, but yeah, that's who I am. Um, I'm real. I'm totally honest. So if you don't like honesty, that's not to come into my space, really. Um, Best yeah. way to be. Best way Absolutely. to be. Absolutely. People know where they stand with you when you're honest. Absolutely. And, you know, it's all about authenticity, isn't it? Absolutely. So. Absolutely. As we discussed in this month's House of Preeminence, there's a plug for the magazine ladies, all you <laughs> ambitious ladies out there. Absolutely. <laughs> and there's one not to be missed coming up very soon. Not that I'm saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> not to be missed, that's all I can say. So, Don, <laughs> once you start giggling... <laughs> Carry on. Seriously. When was your rebirth experience and what caused it? And I'm sure there's more than one. <laughs> <laughs> I have pages and notes, Debbie, of course. <laughs> well, I wanted to kind of clarify this because when we say what was the rebirth and what, when was I reborn, I, th I think we needed to clarify that what I consider a rebirth and being reborn is. Um, so for me, a rebirth comes from making that choice. So as a mother, I was like, okay, well, what is a rebirth? You know, it's when you've actually made that choice to actually step into the next level of your life or the next level of you being who you wish to be. And, the re and being reborn is when you've actually embedded that and embodied that into your actual being. Absolutely. And as a woman, we go through a cycle every single month. Okay, so we are reborn every single month. Every time we wake up in the morning, we are reborn. Every time we make a choice to be the best version of ourselves, we go through that rebirthing process. And then when we've embodied it, that's the re being reborn. But before that, you've got all of the, the growth, you know, the challenges, 
you know, the lessons you're learning and the resistance that you're like, no, no, yes, I've got, oh, you know, letting go of people that no longer serve us, letting go of clothing, housing, environments, um, habits, all of these things have to be in place. And we have to go through all of that before we can actually make that choice to rebirth, before we can actually embody it to be reborn. And then I think that once we actually get present to that and we go, you know what, all of these challenges, it's all good. Everyone might think you're having a midlife crisis or you're having a meltdown, but actually these are the most beautiful times of transformation. But because people just get so stuck in that whole social rhetoric um, I'm trying to be polite here. Um, <laughs> there may be children watching. That's it very much, but there might be. <laughs> there might be some delicate daisies. Who knows? But, you know, when people are so very... I remember when I was going through the Scotland saga, one of my most recent rebirths, like real massive trauma going on in my life at that point. If you want to know more, by crossing the line. It's available on all good bookshops. Um, uh, but being accused of willfully neglecting and abandoning my children, who I'm the kind of mum was like, come on, let's just go off on a road trip. Let's go just do stuff. I didn't like my boys going back to school after the holidays because I love having time with them. Yeah. And, you know, and it was just like, of all the things you could accuse me of, it's certainly not that. But going through that court case, there were so many rebirths. There were so many times to be reborn. You know, and it was just, oh, like the expansion that I was going through. And there was this one friend who goes, I'm really worried about you. I think you're having a meltdown. And I just looked at her and I thought, uh, what? No, I'm not. I'm having a breakdown to have a breakthrough. And I think the thing is when we're in the space that we're in, you know, where we go through this personal transformation, we're going after the life we truly want and not allowing social stereotypes to actually hold us back or the social rhetoric and propaganda and keeping each other small when we let go of that and go mm, yeah we're not on the same wavelength anymore i think it's time for us to move on um thanks ever so much it's been great um you know it's just one party over on to the next party and you're definitely a girl that likes to party <laughs> yeah, I have. I own that dark spot. You want to see me. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. <laughs> Can I just say here, folks, Debbie and I were actually just having a quick chat before we came on. And I wish you I've got some questions just in case we run out of things to say. And I went, what's never going to happen, is it? <laughs> no. Never, ever going to happen. <laughs> We have to stop giggling for it to carry on, but yeah, <sighs> into the flow. <laughs> so, oh, next question. So, when you, <laughs> as you have each rebirth and reborn, what difference or differences have they made in in your in your life, in your environment? wherever you've been when they've happened okay um well i think the first uh i mean it depends on how far you want to go back because i mean i like you i mean i tried to commit suicide years ago like when i i mean I, i'm such a perfectionist i mean there was lots and lots of stuff going on at the time but when i got my mock exam results um, I had just been assaulted by a taxi driver on the way home from college. I got, uh, sorry, and I got, um, you know, and there was so much going on uh, when I was in that space. And I was just like, I got my exam results and I, I didn't, I got less than 85%. That was the, that was the straw that broke the camel's back. Wow. You know, I'd got some, like my dad had been made redundant. Um, and that was like, what's going on in the family? Because, you know, it was just, there was just so much going on. Uh, so that was, and so it was like, that was when I stepped up. I was like, you know what? I'm never going to be made redundant. I'm going to work for myself. And that was uh, like, you know, quite, I wasn't, you know, I was like 
college kind of like end of school i kind of around that age it's all such a blur it's like a lifetime ago and then oh, yeah it will be. you know and then i met my ex-husband and it was like oh well then that, that was another rebirth you know he was he was an arab god forbid that someone from where i grew up married someone from a different town let alone a different country that's just and then a different skin color oh my days that's just horrendous that you would do that you know, and it was really, there, didn't you? <laughs> I know, I got a different religion as well. That's just it's not on, you know, and it's really quite interesting seeing what's going on in the world at the moment. And I'm just like, oh, this has been, this, is this conversation still going on? Seriously? Have you not got nothing better to do? Get a grip, pull your pants up and get on with it, as my mother would say. And, you know, you don't mess with my mum. I do. I'm probably the only one that gets away with it as well. But, <laughs> and so that, that was a, you know, and again, all the questions, all, well, why are people like this? You know, so that was a learning curve. That was a rebirth. And then starting my own business and then writing my book. Every time I write a book, that's a complete transformation because you have to get present to who you are. You have to get present to what's going on. And that launch process of launching a book, not about business. Again, we're not hiding behind a business or a strategy or a step-by-step -step guide. We're talking about getting real, raw and honest with yourself. And when you are prepared to do that and put yourself on the line and say, actually, this is who I am. It's not all the social media gloss and glamour and you know the cash dollar signs or whatever and what you think is the perfect life. This is my life. When you do that, that's when you, you do go through a grieving process as well once you've written the book. So again, it's like another rebirth and I'm just coming to the end of another manuscript that I'm writing to this amazing woman. Oh my God, Annie Gibbons, seriously? I have had a girl, I've been stalking this woman while I've been researching for her biography. I've got a serious girl crush on this woman. If you don't know Annie Gibbons, anniegibbons.com, G-I-B-B-I-N-S. Oh my God, she's amazing. What that woman has been through, and the thing is, is that when you're writing a book about somebody else or you're coaching someone else, as you will know, yes. stuff that they share and stuff that they bring up, bring stuff up for you and you as a coach have got to know how to deal with that you as a ghostwriter need to know how to deal with that as a writer because you're not just writing a book you're not just coaching a client and holding space for them your brain is firing off on all cylinders going yeah, right okay well there's an opportunity there's an industry there's a there's an organization there's a series of podcasts so like my mind starts yeah. mind mapping upon mind mapping upon mind mapping Seriously, if I would have been born in the late 80s, 90s, I'd be off my face on Ritalin and goodness knows what ADHD drugs. But I was born in the 70s. Thank you, Mama. So I'm an inspiring entrepreneur. <laughs> but again, it's like, you know, you go through all these rebirths all the time. We're, we've all been going through one over the last few months. I mean, for oh, some people, it's been a lot tougher than others. I mean, here in uh, South America, we're still in serious lockdown. I mean, I would just love to go into the next county, province, state, whatever you want to call it, but I can't. Yeah. Like five blocks and that's it. Mm -hmm. If I don't have permission papers, thank you. Nice new uh, accommodation, courtesy of uh, the government. I won't say Her Majesty because she's not here, but yeah. You know, the restrictions for different people are very, very different. Yeah. Um, and we've all been faced with, you know, being in a space with the person we say we love, the person we've chosen to spend our life with. We've all been, those of us who are in that situation, have been confronted on many levels. We've had to choose that person again. We've had to choose our home again. Mm, definitely. And then we've choosing. had to choose ourselves. <laughs> Then people having to choose bubbles. Mm. Bit about the bubbles. Try living on a boat with like people you don't know and then sailing across an ocean. Wrong people on the boat, even if you're on a big fat ass tall ship like I was on when I crossed the Atlantic. 
they become minute by the second yeah. when you're on a boat with the wrong person. <sighs> that was a rebirth and a half. I tell you, we joined in Tenerife. Um, and bearing in mind, I spend a lot of time by myself researching and just grounding down. And I've been doing a lot of healing uh, following a really traumatic event that happened um, for me in um, October 2017. And notice I say it happened for me, not to me. Um, because when we believe that things happen to us, then we become, we put ourselves into a victim mind state. Yeah. But when we look at, when we see things as happening for us, then we understand that there is a learning here. There's some growth that we can take on. Um, and I remember standing there <laughs> thinking, right, I can do this. I can cross the Atlantic which that wasn't the issue. I knew I could do that. They put me on any boat and any ocean and I'm, I'm a happy girl. Weeks yeah. away from land, game on, let's go. <laughs> but the thing for me was the fact that I was gonna be surrounded by 53 other people. And I had not chosen to be around those people. I'm very selective over who is in my space, which is why my personal page only has several, you know, just over a thousand people. You want to be in my space, you better be the right kind of person. If not, thank you very much, you know, not having it. That's my space and I'm going to protect it like a lioness. So better hear me roar. Um, and the thing is, it's like this, I was stood there with a cup of tea, which is something else I'm known for. And I was like, right, okay. 52 other people, 53 people, I can do this. I've got my bunk, it's got a curtain, I've got my books, I've got my journal, I can do this. You know, really like, I'm I'd only been with three other people at any one time, like, that I'd spoken with. Um, and that was my Tenerife family. Um, and um, all of a sudden this dude walks up, he goes, oh, you're Dawn, aren't you? You're that international best-selling author. And I'm like, what? Huh? what <laughs> like I'm not really ready for that and I was like yeah and he was like oh yeah I have googled you I'm like, what did you google me for we're about to spend five weeks on a boat together dude why would you google us like for me I'm like I just want to be doing it's not going to, I was gonna say, it's not gonna be talking <laughs> for five weeks to find these out there's night watch, there's day watch, you know, there's cleaning the boat, you know, we had plenty of time. And it was more, and for me, that again was a rebirth because you have to learn how to reinteract with people you're not on the same wavelength with. Yeah. And I did it. And you survived. With style. And the tail. <laughs> No, I didn't survive. I thrived, Debbie. Right. Let's get it right. Thrived to tell the tale. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> and and a question's just come to me. Um, when I I didn't Google you, but um, because obviously <laughs> we're in each other's space, for want of a better word, we were. Um, you have the. You have the real Dawn Bates and you have the Dawn Louise Bates, but you go mm -hmm. by Dawn Bates. So mm -hmm. curiosity got the better of me. Um, so why the real Dawn Bates and why the okay. Dawn Louise Bates? Okay, so why real Dawn Bates on social media? Because it's a reminder to me daily to be real. Really? To show up in all my realness. It's not anything else pretentious, like you get the official or, you know, this, I am the real one, you're, the rest of you are all fake ass Fiona's. No, it's a reminder to me, be real. Yeah. It's not about all the filters and all the fakery. It's not about anything like that. It's just being honest and being real. And whenever I share that or whenever I see that, it's about me being real for who I am and for people who follow me. Because the thing is, we don't, we get so, um, as the fabulous Karen Bain says, we get comparisonitis. Yes. Right. And it's not about us comparing ourselves to anybody else. It's about comparing ourselves with who we were yesterday and remembering that when we do our best every single day, that is also going to fluctuate. Our best today may not be as good as our best yesterday because we may not be feeling as great as we did yesterday. We might have the flu. We might have the headache. Yeah. 
So Have a it's about me being yeah. real. Mm, being kind to yourself, absolutely. As for Dawn Louise Bates, <laughs> I love my mother. Um, those of you who, um, many of you will relate to this because my mother, whenever I, when I was younger, I'd used to sit there and I'd be reading, reading and reading. And like, there were, like when I, whenever I was in trouble, which I wasn't often, wasn't really trouble. <laughs> 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 but my mum would go, Don Louise, and I'd be like, oh, yeah. yeah, now I'm really in trouble. What have I done? The moment she mentioned the Louise, I was like, holy shit, right? Because I knew, like, she'd either been calling me for dinner or asking me to do something. I hadn't heard her. I'm reading the book. You've got no chance. Unless the book has bored me, like, when I'm in a book, I'm in a book, whether I'm writing it or whether I'm reading it. So for me to be at ease with my middle name, this is a nice name. I like Louise. It's the more feminine after the straight to the point dawn. You know, it kind of softens it. <laughs> and again, yeah, and I was, a, I was a tomboy growing up. And over the last few years, it's been about stepping into my femininity and really embracing my feminine energy. So the Dawn Louise has helped me do that because again, it's a rebirth. We go through these birthdays, we go through these stages of our lives, you know, and again, it's embracing my femininity instead of always being in my masculine energy, always being the, the hustler or when you're an entrepreneur, a female entrepreneur, sometimes you have to prove yourself a lot more than your male counterparts. Now, I'm not going to go into the gender issues. If you want to do that, you can read one of my upcoming books. But um, the thing is, it's like, I was one of the first women, um, I think I was the first woman to bring touch screens into the UK business market, as well as DVDs. I was the only sales, and the only reason I know that is because when Toshiba bought them to the UK, I was the only woman in the, in the, in the room, and we were the first company. And I'm like, oh. I was always the only woman, whether it was on the building site when I was project manager's assistant for Lang Management, you know, when we were building the John Radcliffe extension down in Headington in Oxford, you know, the only woman on a building site with, you know, your, um, your project managers, your builders, your, uh, um, what do they call them? Oh, the surveyors. Yeah. yeah, all of like every, per, but you know, whenever I went out, I ended up with lots of brothers. Lots yeah. of protectors, lots Love of people. Of it was great. Wine bars, clubs, restaurants, supermarkets, you, everywhere I went. All these guys were like, you're right. And then he, yeah, it was great. Thank you. <laughs> 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 yeah, it was good. So that's Dawn Louise, and that's why it's real Dawn Bates. That's fantastic. And, and also, I, I love your, your, um, perception on the reborn and the rebirth because like you say you know when you ask somebody about a reborn and a rebirth it, often it's it's the victimhood side of things isn't it you know and mm -hmm. and and seeing it as happening for you than to you because i went through mm -hmm. everything happening to me because that's i lived in victimhood mode um and when I learned they happened for me, it's very, Game very, changer. very, yeah, yeah. It really opens mm -hmm. huge avenues um, for the way you think about your life mm -hmm. and, and, and absolutely. how things have, have transformed and transpired. So I absolutely love that. So thank you so much for sharing. Um, You're sharing welcome. Continuous reborn and rebirth. Mm. Um, I think also the uh, when you step into it happened for me, you also step out of the blame game. Yes. Because you then start to take responsibility for your own actions and your part in something. Yes. And you know there is none of that. Well, it was their fault. It's your fault. I've lost this, or it's your fault. This happened to me. Yeah. No, everybody plays a part. Yeah. Everything happens for a reason. And one of the things that I found really interesting in this online space 
um, is a lot of the so-called coaches and highly spiritual people that have been banging on for years. Oh, this, you know, everything happens for a reason. Just trust the process. The moment the, this whole debacle and all of this whole COVID malarkey kicked off, the amount of people that actually crashed and actually was like in, put completely in fear. Yeah. And they started buying into it and playing into this game that's been going on. And you're like, well, did you actually believe any of that? Did you actually trust? Did you believe that everything happens for a reason? Because your actions are not showing that. That's right. You know, and you've shown up all, in all of this. Absolutely, absolutely. I don't know if uh, the people at um, on Instagram heard that because you kind of went a bit of a Dave Clark good for you techno moment just then. <laughs> yeah, X Raver. It yeah. can never be an X-raver. <laughs> but but that's it, isn't it? it? It's things. Yes, they do happen for a reason. And and when I say I I allowed the bully, people say, but how can how can you say that at eight years old? You didn't have a choice at eight, eight years old. You didn't know any better. I went actually, yeah, I did know better. And yes, I did allow it because I didn't say no. I didn't find ways of stopping it. Mm. You know, so it's, it's, yeah, it's very, no, absolutely. It's very powerful. Turning that two letter word into a three letter word is very, very, mm. very powerful. It reminds me of when I was teaching English to my students in Egypt, I had this phrase, um, small changes make a big difference. And to teach them about uh, like the science of the body, we uh, like they were only four or five years old. So it's very basic. But again, even though it's a basic level of learning, for them it's very advanced. And it was changing the word fat to fit. Small changes make a big difference. Yeah. You know, and if you can change that halawa sandwich to, you know, a banana, then you know not only are you getting rid of tons of sugar but you're also getting lots of potassium yeah and they love bananas halawa for those of you who don't know is just a lot of sugar with sesame and pistachios and it's very nice but don't give me any because i should be high for a week i don't have sugar <laughs> my friend bex used to buy me haribo and she goes let's get dawn high on haribo <laughs> yeah <laughs> if she's watching she knows what i mean Tarantina, like but the thing is it's like when we make these small changes i always like to remind people that even the biggest deserts in the world like the sahara they're all made up of tiny little grains of sand the oceans are all made up of droplets of water you know grains of soil make up massive farmlands and it's all these small changes and these new habits that we make that actually go on to make our greatness and that's it people and you know going back to um karen's you know um comparison comparisonitis yeah <laughs> i call it the comparison right. <laughs> um going back to that you know people hold other people um on a kind of pedestal mm -hmm. their, and it's their perception of what they believe is going on for that person and actually sometimes it's not even like that, you mm -hmm. know, and, it, and it's, it's saying to yourself, because I think what happens is they put that person so high up, but that's the person they want to be like, but they see it's such a huge mountain to climb that they, they, stopped, they stopped going there because it's such a big mm -hmm. mountain when it's all about the little tiny baby steps that get you to the top of the mountain. Go on, Don. <laughs> I have an issue with this phrase, baby steps. Okay, small. Uh, it, it really, uh, you can see I'm triggered by it. And yeah. I know I've got work to do on this. I like But we're not babies, <laughs> we're adults. Yeah. Right? And when we say we've got to take baby steps, when my ex husband had his brain tumor, right? Um, 
that was a rebirth and a half, I can tell you. Um, <laughs> what was really funny was the doctor gave me a leaflet on epilepsy. Well, he's not epileptic. He's just had a brain tumor. It's got nothing to do with it. What are you all about? Oh, well, I stopped reading the leaflet, kind of threw that in the bin, went to the library and got books out on neuroscience and neuroplasticity and how to recode and program the brain. Having worked um, with uh, the chap Wyatt Woodsmall, uh, Mr. NLP, um, for a whole day on his NLP program, like, oh, it was just amazing. Um, great guy. But when we tell ourselves we're taking baby steps, this is not healthy. We can take, um, we can take, but you can say bite size or we can say take small steps. But when we say we're taking baby steps, like seriously? Or as like one of the little boys in my class in Egypt used to go, Sissisly? Like, I love that little boy. I still say Sissisly every now and then. Uh, or en serio, uh, as we say here in South America. See, learning Spanish as well as Arabic. Um, but baby steps, and it's the words that we use. So what you do, know, I've been calling... What does, what does, why, why, and what is it about baby steps that triggers we're you? We're not babies. But it's a way of limiting ourselves. Because it's like when people say the sky's the limit. No, it's not. There are seven levels to the sky. And then you've got the cosmos. And then you've got the black holes and the wormholes. Hey, what's the stop at the sky? I want to go down wormholes through the black holes. I want to go on that roller coaster, that cosmic roller coaster. Yeah. I ain't going to let no sky stop me. Yeah. By the oh. way, just so you know. No, it's fine. <laughs> no, I was, <laughs> no, I was just thinking kind of like, you know, others' perceptions on the baby steps. Because I, when I use the words baby steps, I don't see myself as a baby. I see it that it's a smaller step that I have to take. And just to... say you're going to take steps to get there. Get rid of the word baby. Yeah, but it doesn't... Because your to... brain is hearing it whether you... what what Because you've got to remember how the subconscious works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm taking baby steps. And actually, when you said and... that then, you brought your hand backwards mm. rather than... I'm taking baby steps. I'm, I'm taking I'm steps taking forward. Steps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're an adult. I mean, you try taking a baby step right now, literally. And this is one of the things we did with Wyatt in the NLP program that we had with him. For it was like, take the size of a step of a baby as an adult. Try and walk like a baby, literally. Go and do it. Or try and sit down in a chair. You're either going to sit down or you're not. You're either pregnant or you're not. You're not. Yeah. You can't be half pregnant. You can't no. try at doing something. Master Yoda, hello, if there is a guru out there, I mean, Yoda has got to be on the top level of those. <laughs> there is no try. There is only do, exactly. right? Yeah. Yeah. So you're either going to take steps forward or you're not. Yes. It doesn't matter whether you, and this is, it's like, oh, it, no, you're taking steps forward. You can take leaps forward. You can take jumps. So again, forward. it's about, yeah. You so can you take say, you jumps. Don't say baby exactly. leaps or, or baby jumps. You say leaps and jumps, don't you? So, absolutely. Yeah. So, why do we use baby steps? We're not babies, we are adults. End of lecture, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Not. <laughs> no, but I can... No, Stop but it. <laughs> it's all about language, isn't it? You know, mm. it's all about the language that we use and how that language takes a part in how we move forward. Mm. You know, and not often using language and not seeing the language for what it really is. Mm. and the reasons it can prevent you moving forward um, mm. is the kind of not the lack of understanding of language but the lack of how that language can affect you either negatively or positively depending mm. on the language used you know which is absolutely very powerful isn't it absolutely i mean look at how it impacted my, my boys and my family and i um, back in scotland five years ago 
I spoke Arabic to my boys, and their dad's an Arab, so of course I'm going to speak Arabic to them. And did I know that there was going to be a racist, ignorant police officer there with his handcuffs at the ready, ready to throw me in a police cell for three and a half days without being questioned and then have three years to fight a court case? No. But because I spoke Arabic and people think that Arabic is an aggressive language, he was like, stop being aggressive to your children. I'm like, I'm not being aggressive. I'm speaking Arabic to them. Oops, there go the handcuffs, right? But the thing is, when we perceive a certain language, I mean, I absolutely adore Arabic. I think it's one of the most beautiful, if not the most beautiful language. You know, sailing around the world, you get to understand. Um, I mean, I, learned, I spoke Arabic because of my husband, but because also I've studied Islam and religion and the, like lots of theology. Um, but for example, when we say please in English, the Arabs would say min fadlik which actually, when you translate it, the closest you'll get is from your generosity. Like, I mean, seriously? From your generosity? How much nicer is that than please? Yeah. You know, and then when we say goodnight to each other in Arabic, Yeah, I was going to say, please, please can be misinterpreted by the way you say please. Absolutely. The tonality of your voice. When we do take our clients on a guided meditation, you know, whether we take them back on a timeline therapy healing, you know, you, it's the tonality that we're using, like the hypnosis and like the softness and the speed. When we're delivering a speech on stage, it's very different to us having a conversation here. There's a difference to me. It's like the word Wallahi, the name of my second book. When you, when you use Wallahi in a very Arabic sense, um, depending how you say that again means seriously or what like and it can be said in shock it can be said as like are you for real seriously yeah. or it'd be like seriously Wallahi. but when you use it in an islamic sense it means swear to my god because the i on the end means my like yanni is i have i think yanni no yanni is i mean i mean yeah uh, <laughs> Andic is uh, I have Andic. Um, so again, it's like when we learn these languages, like here in um, South America, Basura, um, you know, I was just like, what Basura? Like, uh, means hurry up in Arabic, but here it's rubbish. I'm like, what? <laughs> And one of the words here that really has re done my head in is the word molester. Like, to mean I'm bothering you, am I annoying you? And I'm like, oh my goodness. What? Absolutely. So when we, and again, as an author, word geek at like central here, <laughs> looking at how words impact us and the impact they have on our readers, to those of us in the English speaking world, when we hear the word molester, we're thinking like, you know, yeah. people like Jeremy Epstein and all of those dark and evil people that, you know, are in the, that sphere. But here in, in, in Spanish language, it only means my, like to annoy or to bother. Yeah. So you can imagine like the shift that I have had to go through as I'm learning Spanish, like another rebirth. Yeah, you're not joking. You should hear my like, you should hear my sentences sometimes. You know, they start off in Arabic, they might go into Spanish, and then some Donglish. I'm now calling it Donglish because I don't think I have a language anymore. It's just a <laughs> <laughs> it's just a mixed bag of you know. There's I can sail in German and in Austrian. I can sail in a bit of Italian. I can speak some Spanish. Argentinian Spanish and Chilean Spanish is slightly different to the European Spanish. And I no doubt when I get to Costa Rica and Mexico, it will be completely different again. Again, the Arabic language is as diverse as the English language. Yeah. And when um, I meet Arabic people and I start speaking to them in Arabic, they're like, where are you from? I'm like, oh, I'm from England. <laughs> <She's> like, <laughs> White English girls speaking Arabic and like, is it Egyptian? Is it Fusa? Is it modern standard? Is it uh, Shermi? 
and I'm like, oh, Yandik Arabi Shorbat Fi Mukhti, which means I have Arabic soup in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not even a phrase, that's a dawn phrase. A dawn so, phrase. yeah, it's just, language makes up our world, and it's not just a spoken language. It's the language of our eyes and yeah. our facial expressions and our body language and our energy. Yeah. I feel you before you've even entered my space. <laughs> I will look at people's faces. Like when people send me a face, a friendship request on Facebook, I, go, I look at their, uh, their photo. If it's not happy, smiley one, if they've got a miserable face, I don't want you in my space. Absolutely not. If you cannot be bothered to put a happy smiley face or a nice picture on your Facebook or on your social media, why on earth would I want you in my space? And if you have got a military, a white military, you know, the all American boy, <laughs> guys from the Indian subcontinent and the West African subcontinent, I'm talking directly to you right now. Stop it. You know, they've got all of these all American pictures and they've only been created in the last few months, but they've got hundreds of posts. And you know what? I speak and read Arabic. I see your friendship list or not. And I can see whether you have lots of females and only females on your phone or profile. You really think I'm going to accept your friendship? <laughs> not on your Nelly. Delete. <laughs> <laughs> Try and explain not on your Nelly or Bob's your uncle to someone who's not English. <laughs> Listen, Bob is not I, find it, I find it difficult to explain to people here in Manchester what some of the Geordie phrases are because I, I mean, I'm from Newcastle and I still don't understand half of yeah, them. Yeah, you are. <laughs> you know, no. Go to Sheffield then. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, dialect in itself is before you even hit another language is. Uh, well, exactly. Absolutely. Look at bread rolls. Are they bread rolls? Are they bats? Are they cobs? Are they bread cakes? Are the bomb cakes? Bomb cakes? When I first came to Manchester, well, bomb cake? What's a bomb cake? <laughs> <laughs> when I went to Sheffield, I was like, why would I want a cake made out of bread or bread made out of cake with like salad and avocado? Like what? Yeah. You, you folk in Sheffield are a bit strange. <laughs> bread cake. It's a bread roll for heaven's sake. <laughs> bread roll. You come from Georgia. Yeah, it's bap. <laughs> and then when you get a stotty cake, well, that's even... Oh, don't even go there. <laughs> another, thing on, another thing on its own. <laughs> but again... Baps mean something very different to the locals in England. <laughs> so whether it's baby steps we're taking or whether we're saying it happened for us or to us, again, we've just demonstrated how our language makes up so many different aspects of our life and the impact. It can bring us humor. It can bring us, you know, confusion and like fear. But also the communication we have with our ringtones on our phone. I remember working with the Asylum Seekers Council and we were, when we were doing a lot of work with refugees, etc. We all had to turn off our ringtones on our phone and just have them on vibrate. Because when a ringtone goes off, it might actually trigger a traumatic experience in the people who have just escaped from civil war or from the guerrillas. Um, and I'm not talking about the big hairy ones either. No. Um, because the ringtone, can you imagine a gorilla walking around? <laughs> 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 the latest uh, time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, um, and the thing is, when that ringtone goes off, in a when a child hears it, that might trigger a memory of seeing their father or their mother dragged off or shot in front of them or raped in front of them. And so we don't know the impact we're having on people by the words that we're not even aware we're using, i.e. I get triggered by adults saying baby steps and seeing adults reading children's books. There are plenty of great adult books out there. Start reading them. Stop being a child. Grow up. I like my Enid Blyton Tupperney Fifo and Jinx. Oh, when you posted that the other day, Enid Blyton, it's quite interesting. Because Khalid, my eldest, said when all that Scotland saga kicked off, he goes, Mummy, because they, then they were still calling me Mummy. Now they've switched to Mama because I don't like Mum. Um, and they're too old to call me Mummy. But I'm just like, no, Mama's good. He was like, Mummy, why is it 
you're living, you're taking us off on all these adventures like we read about in Enid Blyton and they thought they get us to read all these adventure books. But when we go off on adventures, you get arrested. I'm like, well, hmm. <laughs> you know. Adventure all on a song. <clears throat> She's a great writer though. Oh. So, oh, amazing. Yeah. I think I had yeah. every single book she ever wrote when I was little. And Nancy Drew. Oh, I yeah. wanted to be Nancy Drew. Yeah. I was Nancy Drew. I'm telling you, I was Nancy Drew. <laughs> I was in the attic was another good one. That was dark. Did that? That was dark. What was it called? Virginia Andrews. Oh, that was yes. in the attic. That was in the attic. Very dark. Right, a passage. Again, a rebirth. You read a book like that for the first time after Enid Blyton. There's a rebirth all in itself. Oh, gosh, yeah, Oof. absolutely. <laughs> Oh, Dawn, this has been absolutely fabulous. Lots of laughs. I'm glad you've enjoyed it. I have. Yeah. Good. Lots of laughs. Lots Thank of you. real, just truth and authenticity that people can take and an understanding of so many different things that can affect our lives. Mm. You know, not just you know, the physical or the mental, but everything else that goes in between. So thank you so, so much for being with us today. You're um, absolutely welcome. It's been a pleasure. Anytime. Oh, that's absolutely amazing. So if people out there want to get up close and personal with the Dawn Baines, <laughs> the Dawn Good luck with that. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> um, how, <laughs> how can you touch with you? Well, they can follow me on Instagram or if they do Twitter that um, at at Real Dawn Bates. I should also find my uh, my public figure page on Facebook. I'm also on LinkedIn, um, and there's also like my uh, personal page. Again, if you've not got a smiley face, don't bother applying. <laughs> um, but yeah, they, you know, and there's also my website, dawnbates.com. Um, and if they subscribe to join, then they can, um, you know, they'll receive um, email updates. I'm not one of these people that bombard your email every single, I can't be bothered to write that much. I've got other stuff I'm writing, courses, yeah. books, articles. They can follow me with the House of Preeminence and the One Tribe magazine as well. I write for both of those. So then you can you can find me. You can find just me. Google me. Yeah. Just Google me like the guy <laughs> did on the shit. <laughs> yeah. In fact, my eldest son said to me, he goes, Mommy, have you Googled yourself? I was like, why would I do that? He goes, you should Google yourself. I was like, what how, why are you Googling me? He goes, no, but my friends are. <laughs> so I was like, oh my God. <laughs> Being stalked by Google. <laughs> Via Google. <laughs> <laughs> oh once again yeah. Dom, thank you so so much for, for you're very welcome my darling really have an amazing day everybody and if you've got any questions just drop them below and i'll get back to you that's brilliant so everyone a big thank you to dawn and thank you to all of you who are either watching live or come to this at a later date uh, it's full of just amazing uh, information and support for everyone out there so once again, I'm Debbie Debonair from Heart Act, and I'll see you all again very, very soon. Ciao.